hello, Nigeria. There's no better place to be, so don't you ever change that dial. What's up, everybody? It's Kavam Zasukwa, and you're watching Hello, Nigeria. You're welcome back to Hello, Nigeria. It's time for us to go straight to our top story. We have a special guest in the studio, like I introduced him earlier. His name is Barrister Timi Olagunju. He's a lawyer and a recipient of the Mandela, uh, he's a fellow of the Mandela Washington Institute. I will be looking at leadership as an antidote to Nigeria's challenges. Nice to have you on Hello Nigeria. A pleasure, Tom. Thank you. Hello, Tim. You're welcome again on the show. Mm -hmm. And I'm really glad because more than anyone, you're at a good place to speak about leadership, having been, a, you know, gone through the Mandela Washington Fellowship and being here. You went to America for a few weeks and then you were able to mix with you know, some Americans and look at their own style of leadership. Yeah. What would you say, because obviously America has been around for a very long time and are known as a giant of the world, what would you say makes leadership work in America that we lack here in Nigeria? Well, the fact is this, um, there's one key word that is quite um, resonant with the American institution, and it's empathy. Mm -hmm. And that itself is what somehow has been institutionalized at all levels of leadership. And so you find out that um, people lead not with the context of a, a mindset of selfishness, but a mindset of selflessness. The greater good. Yes, the greater good. And for those few, we call them the few Judases, right, who decide to go astray, there's an institutional framework that ensures that a leader or the leadership becomes empathetic to the people. So there's an accountability framework too. You know, and that's something I think we can learn from. Now, Tibi, I want to ask you this yes. question. It's an ongoing debate. It's been going on for generations. Are leaders born or are leaders made? Uh, well, well, that's an interesting subject. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, I think that leaders are actually made. But some people are born into the framework of leadership. Uh, and that's where we need to distinguish title leadership from leadership in the context of influence, right? So if a person is born into leadership, perhaps you're a prince, right? So or that's, you're a Bush or Clinton. Exactly, so title leadership. But to generate influence is a matter of personal choice. And there are certain qualities that come with influence. And there are three key things that really come with leading with influence. You must lead from within. That means you need to lead yourself. Second thing, you must be able to lead others inspire others. And thirdly, you must be ready to be led. There are a lot of people that are leaders but are not ready to be led. And Socrates said something. He said, uh, if you have not been a good follower, you cannot be a good leader. Very, yeah, very true. Correct. Yes. I will never forget when I had to write an essay about um, myself in, in school. And I said, oh, I'm a good leader and a bad follower. And I think my teacher should have said, far, 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 <laughs> like they say. Well, it's years ago, and I think I'm like, what manner of folly was that? But let's take a look at Nigerian leadership. And let's, you know, we speak a lot, you know, very abstractly many times mm. when we talk about leadership. And we have very good examples here where we can speak practically. The president, Muhammad Buhari, is our leader. He's, I mean, he's the number one leader in Nigeria. We have leaders at different levels, different tiers of government. Yeah. But he's the number one leader. A number of people have criticized his style of leadership. Being that, over 50 days, we haven't heard from our leader. Well, we did hear from him in Hausa. Well, I didn't understand what he was saying because I don't speak Hausa. As a leader, how better could he have handled you know, his being away? We're not saying he shouldn't be sick, but what are the things that he ought to have done to exhibit or to show the fact that he is an exemplary leader? Well, fundamentally, one of the first key parts of leadership is the fact that you must seek to understand before being understood. And that brings us back to empathy, right? Mm -hmm. So when you understand the people, firstly, and that's one thing we need to institutionalize, even at the parliamentary level, straight down to the executive, we need to institutionalize this need for empathy where people don't just do what they feel like doing. They do what is contextually relevant to the people they are leading. So you have someone... They put themselves in their shoes. Exactly, in, yeah. in the shoes of... you know. So you have a situation where someone in the parliament um, does not hold town hall meetings, mm -hmm. and then he gets constituency allowances, and then mm -hmm. comes and does a borehole. And in two weeks, the borehole is gone, because the borehole is not the need of the people. 
is one of the wants of the people. So in order to get the needs of the people, there is need for conversation. Yes. Conversation enriches the understanding. There's need to, to seek first to understand the people you're leading mm -hmm. before being understood. And that's very important, you know, in the context of leadership. And that seems to be quite lacking. And you see, when it comes to leadership, I, I want you to focus on my fingers, right? Leadership in this context will mean, let's say this is problem, this is solution, this is value, and this is wealth. Wealth means democratizing opportunities for all. So you have a country where there are a lot of problems but limited solutions. And that country is what? A lot of problems with limited solutions but a lot of human and material resources. Nigeria. Oh, Nigeria. Oh, okay. <laughs> you, you said so. <laughs> okay, because I'm being tried political yes. here. But, but that's a fact. So if Nigeria is that case, then what's the problem? We talk about leadership. The problem is if you remove problems away, you talk of what? Solution Solutions. and value. Why is there no wealth? Well, because there's a lack of solution-driven ideas leaders. that will lead to value and create wealth, right? And so you see it everywhere in Nigeria. People finish graduating from the university. The next thing they are thinking about is how to get that next job. Yes. But they are not thinking like entrepreneurs or entrepreneurs to say, okay, even I'm working in this organization, I want to start my business. How do I add value to the Nigerian people? How do I solve Nigerian problems? And so people have not taken leadership in their own personal lives. That, that brings me to this question. Um, it's also an ongoing debate. Mm. There's a saying, if you look back at Nigeria, 50 odd years since independence in 1960, uh, we shouldn't be where we are. Everybody, our founding fathers wouldn't be proud of the Nigeria yes. uh, they see today. There's also a saying that if you happen to have died in the 1940s and you reincarnate, that <laughs> those dead bodies will find their way back to their village without getting lost, because not much has changed. It's really <laughs> an indictment on the, on the entire system. Yeah. Now, Nigerian leaders have taken the lion's share of the blame. If you ask a Nigerian, why are we this way? Always oh, the politicians, the leaders, bad leadership, bad leadership. But these leaders didn't come from Jupiter or Mars. They yeah. attended Nigerian religious institutions, yes. Nigerian schools, Nigerian um, institutions. Yes everywhere so why do we always point the fingers don't you think that that the people really deserve the kind of leaders they get well that's that's the interesting truth mm. but you know conscience is an open wound only truth can heal so let's imagine that you have a basket of eggs right and then you take the first egg is rotten egg you take the second egg is rotten egg. You take the third egg, is rotten egg, and then you say, oh, the problem is the fact that I keep taking rotten eggs. Rather than face up the problem, which is that the basket is a basket of rotten eggs. Yeah. Right? Simple. So yeah. the point there is this. There are people, you see, leadership is beyond just trying to um, lead people. It's also leading oneself. And there's something we call the leadership capital. The leadership capital can also be Capacity to lead. And these things are actually built by doing little things well over a period of time. But money politics throws everything you've said. Because a lot of people will say, oh, you're just talking theories. And that in Nigeria, what attracts people to political office money. is the material and um, monetary benefits they get. Look at the legislators. Look at their salaries. It's not a reflection of the economic situation in the country. Look at the minimum wage compared to what they're exactly. taking home. So. How do I, when I see it as a business opportunity, as an opportunity to enrich myself, things will not get better. You're looking at the ideal situation. How do we deal with those fundamentals and make the Nigerian people less docile and bring their leaders to accountability? Well, well, basically, there's this organization that I founded called Youth in Motion, right? So rather than agonize like over the problem, I, I like the name. rather <laughs> than agonize over the problem, we organize so. solutions mm -hmm. in our own little way, take leadership into our hands. And one of the things we did was we looked at the shrinking gap of civic participation, particularly with young people, mm -hmm. and then decided that we're going to take a batch of teenagers, right, to observe parliamentary sittings and see how parliamentary sittings are done, and they get training on civic engagements. And then we took a pre-test and a post-test and we discovered the difference, right? So that tells you something. Knowledge is power. What were your findings? 
Good. Our findings include that knowledge is power. Mm -hmm. Because when people are properly, they properly know what to do and how to go about doing it, right? They are more organized. What we find in Nigeria is that there is, even amongst the elites, you find civic ignorance. So if I ask, for instance, we take a survey and say, oh, how many people know what, um, what kind of legislative government we run mm -hmm. at the state level? Or at the federal yeah, level, people don't know. People don't know. So, so you mentioned the problem with people's ignorance uh, when, with regards to civic mm. knowledge. But we have a situation where civic education is not even part of the curriculum in Nigeria. It was removed. How do we then solve the problem of civic ignorance so that we can have more civic responsible more enlightened yes, enla because yeah. a lot of people and just people. have an apathy towards um towards the civic process or election process the only time they come to bear is when they have to come and put their thumb well can no longer thumb print mm -hmm. but they use their voters cards after they've been vote. lobbied by people they don't even know yes. in a process that they're not even aware of so yes. they just do anything yes. at yes. all how can we then sensitize people particularly from a young age mm. as to civic education knowing about their civic that's, rights? That's that's a, that's a very key question, basically, because really, you know, one thing I did, someone said something, one of the U.S. presidents said something. He said that democracy itself is not natural. People must learn to become democratic. Mm. So true. it both sounds to knowledge, but that is us as an organization doing something. And interestingly, after we did that, some other young persons actually went to other states. So we used Oyo State as a pilot state, right? And then people went to other states to start trying things like that, take the few number of people mm -hmm. they can take in to the, gallery, to the yeah. parliament, observe parliamentary sitting, and then they ask questions, then do some series of trainings for them about civic engagement. You know, and so that's the little we could do as private citizens. But trust me, there's a place of political leadership mm. in driving this. But, you know, like Machiavelli said, the lukewarm defenders are those who profit by the old order. So the people who profit by the old order would definitely not want a situation that will salvage you. Because an enlightened electorate yes, is a means, to the status quo. Yes. However, all hope not lost. Hmm. And that's why we as young people must drive that agenda. That agenda towards civic education. Yes. You know, the new drive is this. Don't be deceived and say, oh, I don't have capacity to lead. It is a lie from the pit of hell. A very big lie because at 20 something, you find people leading. Those who led us from colonialism into independence when they are 20s and 30s. So you have capacity to lead. However, don't focus on the executive office. 2019 is coming. Let young people, over 70% of the population of 190.7 million people, yes. look at the parliamentary government and find a way to get into contesting at the parliamentary level. All right, I like that you said we should get away to contesting, but a lot of people say that there are barriers to young people contesting. Number yeah. one is even the by law the age stipulated. I know okay for for the national assembly it's a bit younger. I think it's about thirty or thirty five for the national assembly, yeah. but for higher positions of office, it's you have to be at least forty. That already that's one barrier. Other people have barriers of godfather, right? fatherism, the fact that you cannot run as an independent candidate. So even if you don't believe in the ideologies of all the other parties. You just have to join one of these parties. How can we work around these limitations as yes. young people to still run for office like you have suggested? So, you see, the point still is this. You see, rather than agonize over the problem, it is time for us to organize. And so, if you look at it carefully, you discover that you would always find somewhere to deal with the issue. For example, in 2015, I had the privilege of being presented to run for the House of Assembly, Ibado or your state, or your in state. a particular party. But at that time, I was 29, right? Okay, I was 28 plus, right? And then they said, look, we, the youth, we want you as youth candidate in this particular party. So you go and swear affidavit, increase your age. And I said, no, integrity is the correspondence of words with action, mm. right? Let me use this time to learn all that I can learn by volunteering. Because what you do for free, can later bring you a fee. True. So during that time, I used it, learned about the looks and crannies, the dots and the eyes, and the T's of the polity. And then 2019, I can then say, okay, I want to come out for something else in Ibadan North, right? Constituency where I'm from. Now, the point there is this. 
if you look at it, National Assembly, but there was something we also did. We started up the Not Too Young to Run campaign, right? Fantastic. So that campaign is reducing the age to 25 years. Yes. But that's a campaign, right? Because the truth is that the parliament, we did a research, we discovered that the parliament, you don't have women below 40 years in the National Assembly. That's the Senate and House of Reps. Yes, it's that mm. pathetic. And those 35 years, say 40 years and below, in the National Assembly or the House, uh, the House of uh, National Assembly, that's the Senate or House of Rep, are uh, around six to seven people. Let me ask you a question because we need to go quickly. Yes. Very well. How old is? Uh, at what age do you start to pay taxes in Nigeria? Eighteen in, years. Eighteen. If you can pay taxes, exactly. you should be should able be. to run so for vote. office yes. because you die for it is your, your taxes that are f that is funding for in, in some cases yes. the salaries of these people. So if you are funding them, you ought to have the opportunity yes, to run yes. as well. Yes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we've had a very very good conversation with Barista Timmy Olagunji. We look forward to you running. <laughs> you know, it's in twenty nineteen. Yeah. Thank Thanks. you very much for coming thank indeed so and for thanks to all me. those who have tuned in remember you're not too young to run you're not too young to take part and be actively involved in civic duties so know about and the also follow the news know what's happening in the yes. country it's not every time you watch music videos and um yes <laughs> uh, you're twerking on Can I you're twerking your future all right you have 20 seconds to say okay I, I think it's also very important that people learn the ropes so learn to inquire what you require from those who have acquired what you desire mm -hmm. okay it's quite important Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you once again, Barista Timi yeah. Ola Gunju from Ibadan North. I won't forget that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies Thank and gentlemen, you. it has been Hello Nigeria. Today in history, we have the birthday of Tom Cruise. Yes, the actor was born today in history, actor and producer, who won Golden Globe Awards for his roles in Born on the 4th of July, Jerry Maguire and Magnolia. His other well-known films include Top Gun, Risky Business, Rain Man, uh, Nearly Mission, uh, Mission Impossible, and The Firm, my, one of my favorite books of all time, written by John Grisham, The Firm. Um, yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if it's your birthday today, the 3rd of July, 3rd happy July. birthday to you. It's Olukayo Day, Oshinoiki's birthday. Mutuaya son, happy birthday, Olukayo Day. And to all those who are celebrating today, it's been fun, it's been interesting, and it's been very informative today on the show. We hope you tune in again tomorrow as we discuss health. My name's Aya Thompson, I've had Benga Bora at Captain Sankara, Timi Olagunju, Barista Timi Olagunju from Ibadan North, myself, Aya Thompson at Aya Thompson 7 on Twitter, and of course, Olive Emodi, who's away at the moment, at Olive Emodi. Collectively, at HNS Wazobia Max, and of course, at Wazobia Max. Thank you very much for tuning in. To enjoy more of this, our Ogunge videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.